What is going on, everyone? I hope you're all feeling amazing. Today, we have got a final update on the AMD pricing situation. This is it. This is the last video that I am planning to make on this AMD pricing situation, unless something really big comes up that kind of rocks the boat in the future. But as of right now, this is my final word basically on this, my final thoughts on it, as well as an official response that we can see from AMD. So we will start off there over on PC Games and who are at Gamescom during this past week, and they got a chance to speak with Gerald Youngblood from AMD on the floor of Gamescom, who gave PC Games N an official response, which reads as follows. Our SEPs and the price tag that we announced is our full intention of where we would suggest the product be priced, not just for launch, but ongoing. What happened though was we launched the product and the demand was really huge. Now we're focused on replenishing so that there is plenty of stock so we can encourage our partners to hit the SEPs that we announced. SEP being suggested e-tail pricing. And he said to follow that up, he also goes on to say, first of all, we just need to drive as much stock as we can because inventory is really important in everybody being able to hit those prices. Then it's just working with our partners to enable it, but we don't set the price of their product. But we will drive and do everything that we can to get those prices to where we suggested when we launched them earlier. So that is the official word from AMD that they are not changing the MSRP on these products or the SEP, which is their term that they've been using since pre-launch. And honestly, it's a term I've never seen online anywhere else. I, before, I, when I first made my pricing video on this AMD situation, I tried looking up SEP and I couldn't find it anywhere except for AMD using it in some of their press slides. Usually what you will see is M MSRP, Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price, which is just that. It's a suggested price according to the FTC. If you go over on their website, they someone they do a Q&A at the bottom of their explanation on MSRP and it says, what, the question being, one of my suppliers marks this product with MSRP, do I have to, ch to charge this price? And the answer to that is the key word there is suggested. A dealer is free to set the retail price of the product that sells. A dealer can set the price at the MSRP or at a different price as long as the dealer comes to that decision on its own. However, the manufacturer can decide not to use the not to use distributors that do not adhere to its MSRP. So what they're basically saying there is that the retailer can choose to charge whatever they want, but AMD or the product supplying that cannot set the exact price. That would technically be illegal. But what AMD could do is if these retailers are not falling in line with the pricing that they would like to see, they could choose to not work with those particular retailers. Another thing that they, that they could do is MAP, which is the minimum advertised price. That basically allows them to set a floor for the pricing of the product to say that you cannot sell our product below $499, let's say for instance on Vegas 64. They could set an MAP to say they're not allowed to sell it anything below that. You may have seen this before if you ever tried to buy something on Amazon or maybe on Newegg where it's like, okay, this product is on sale but you can't see the final price until it's in your shopping cart. The reason for that is minimum advertised pricing because they are not allowed to advertise a price below the MAP, but they can get around it by doing things like that, by allowing you to get the price only once it's in your shopping cart and you're in the process of checking out. So that is one way that retailers and e-tailers can kind of get around MAP pricing. Now, the question really becomes from here is how is AMD going to get these retailers to sell at that price knowing that they can actually get way more for these cards if they're trying to take advantage of miners and people that are just really enthusiastic to get these cards for compute performance. As we've seen, people are already willing to pay more than what these cards are worth, especially when the gaming performance is rather lackluster when you look at its competitors out there in the market, unless the Vega, 60, uh, Vega 56, I should say, comes out at its $399 price against GTX 1070, that's a very competitive price for them and they really do win in that area if the e-tailers and retailers out there do hit that MSRP of $399. But the likelihood of that happening could be a little bit more difficult for AMD to control, especially with the limited amount of stock that they've been able to provide. So what they're really going to have to do is, according to over on WCCF Tech, what they will be doing is they're going to be choosing about 10 to 20 different e-tailers where they will offer them rebates in order to encourage that lower pricing so they kind of get money back from the manufacturer in order to keep the pricing lower. But the question there comes in is, can the retailers and e-tailers actually get more than that? And we've seen that in some cases that they actually can. So if 
they want them to list Vegas 64 for $499 and they give them a $100 rebate on top of that, which would basically make it $600. Could they get more than $600? Undoubtedly, yes. I mean, Newegg was just running a daily deal for $690 that Paul Paul's Hardware tweeted out, which was rather amusing. They listed Vegas 64 on their daily deals for $690, which is just insane because it should be $500, but they're calling it a deal at like $690. So so we will just have to kind of wait and see there what's going to happen from now with the with the pricing. It's But according to AMD, their official word is that they are not changing the MSRP at all. They still want these retailers to hit that pricing. But the retailers can really do whatever they want with MSRP. They could charge above that. They could charge below that as long as it's not below the MAP that we talked about previously. So we will just kind of have to wait and see what happens from here. Now, another thing that was kind of kind of weird in all of this is that they said that they were putting out the Radeon packs, which were $100 above retail, which are kind of convoluted to begin with, with the fact they come with two games, but then they force a specific monitor and processor. And the monitor is, you know, it's an ultra-wide Samsung monitor which is uh, quite pricey. They said they were doing that in order to keep the stock away from miners so that they would not be attracted to buying these higher price packs because it comes with all of this other stuff that isn't really necessary for the miners to have. But then they go out and they release this beta driver, which improves cryptocurrency mining. It's the first beta driver they put out after release. Rather than focusing on game performance and issuing that driver right away, AMD chose to go the other route so they're talking out of one side of their mouth about, oh, we don't want miners to buy our cards. We're making these cards for gamers. But then on the other side of their mouth, they're like, yeah, we're actually putting out this really great mining driver so that you can get a better hash rate when you're mining Ethereum. One person had said they went from 31 mega hash per second to up to 37 mega hash per second using the AMD cryptocurrency beta driver. So that's kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of messed up that they would do that, you know, especially when they were talking about these Radeon packs being, being meant to keep the stock away from miners only to put out a beta driver specifically for miners. So not really sure what AMD was thinking there. They've kind of made quite a few mistakes on this launch and they could have done things a lot differently. If you personally ask me, we'll just have to wait and see now what pricing is going to land at. And it's really going to come down to AMD being able to fulfill the, the supply for the demand that is out there for these cards, whether it be gamers or or for miners wanting to pick up RX Vega graphics cards. And one of the big things with that will be the supply of HBM2, which is rather expensive and limited to only one supplier, which is Samsung. We're still waiting on SK Hynix, who are going to be coming out with their own version of HBM2, but that won't be towards the end of 2017. So that's a few months away, yet until we will see a second manufacturer bringing in HBM2 that AMD could kind of source for their stock. Right now, they're limited to just Samsung, and that will likely impact how well they're able to replenish the supply of RX Vega graphics cards. But please let me know your thoughts, as always, down in the comments below. As I said, this is really the last, I feel like this is the last thing we have to go over on this whole pricing debacle with AMD. So let me know your thoughts on the update here and whether or not you're still considering buying an RX Vega card if they come out at the price they are. Because like I said, the Vega 56 is still a very, very enticing offer if you can get it for $400. Around $400 is going to be a really great price for Vega 56 because it wipes the floor with 1070, no questions asked. Vega 64 is a bit of a tougher one. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to go out and spend five or $600 on one of those when you can get a GTX 1080 right now for around $500, $520, depending on the manufacturer and the aftermarket cooler and all of that. And it just kind of, it beats Vega 64 pretty darn well in most titles. I mean, there's DX12 situation, Vega pulls ahead in DX12, but majority of the games out there right now are still DX11. So how important that is to you for the future is really going to fall on you with your graphics card decision. If you're going to bank on more DX12 titles coming out, that it's going to take advantage of RX Vega, because that is obviously going to be a concern for some people, but not for everyone. If you just want to play DX11 games that are out now, like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Overwatch, and you just want to get the best performance you can, the 1080 kind of seems like a better buy, especially with there just being a lot more availability. So I'm going to get out, out of here, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys down in the comments for discussion. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Don't forget to leave a like on it down below, and subscribe if you are new here. And if you're not new here, you've been here for a while, you can always hit that notification bell so you find out whenever I'm uploading new tech news videos like this one here, and you can never miss a second of content. But I will catch you guys next time. Ta-ra.